Hey guys, Phil here, hope you're all well. What you're looking at is a Goodman's portable speaker, Bluetooth speaker. Uh, now this belongs to my nephew. And what he's done is he's broken the charging port um, and I need to fix it. Now I don't have this with me anymore, it's why I've got a picture on the TV. Um, it was qu quite a, uh, a rush job, I had to get it done quick for him. Um, but yeah, he'd broken the the USB charging port just here. And in fact, I have the old one just here. And there it is. Now, what I have to do is take the old one off and repair it, uh, replace it. But yeah, like I said, I don't have it with me anymore. But what I did was I recorded the footage using my microscope. So yeah, a little bit of a different one today, guys. So if you stick around, I'll get fixing this thing. So the first thing I'm doing here guys is I'm just inspecting so I want to see how bad it is and it's pretty bad you can see that uh, there's pretty much only one anchor point holding this USB micro B connector on and that's the top left anchor point as you can see on the video now, if you look carefully you can see one of the pads has been lifted as well, one of the data pads that has been lifted. Now at this point I'm wondering if I can just solder this back down. Um, but it will become evident in a second that I can't really do that and I'll, and I'll tell you why I can't do that right now. If you look carefully there are four pins. Now they're supposed to be five pins um, but one of them is sheared off and that pin that sheared off is the VCC pin. Um, now VCC is uh, the track that has the crease in it. If you look at where it says R1 and then you go up to the US in the USB that track there is the VCC uh, and when I lift this up you'll see that you, hopefully you can see that there there's the pin that's still connected to that pad uh, and it's just completely sheared off um, and you'll see it better in a second when I put a bit of heat on that uh, one anchor point so I can lift it up even more And there you can see it much better. You can see that pin has completely sheared off. And it's also lifted the pad with it as well. And there you go, just, just a, a bit of information there just to show you what's happened. Now what I did was I came along I took that connector off, there was nothing really holding it on there, it was only that anchor point, that top left anchor point that was holding it on. Uh, now what I'm doing now is I'm just cleaning off those pads. Now quick tip for you guys, I've got my soldering iron set very low, it's set to 220. The reason for that is these pads, they're so small and delicate, the more heat I pump into them, the 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 higher chance I've got of, of taking them uh, with the actual solder braid, desoldering braid. And I don't really want to do that, so I've got my soldering iron set really low. Um, yeah, and I'm just cleaning up uh, the actual 
connector anchoring points and the solder pin points so I can fit a new connector on there. Now these points don't really matter, these can take a lot of heat because these are anchor points for the shield, uh, they're grounded so they can take a lot of heat but the actual pins, data pins and the VCC and that, the ground pin as you can see they're pretty small and I don't want to damage them anymore and you, if you look at the VCC pin, you, there you go, did you see it move? That thing's actually lifted, if you look carefully it's got a crease in it as well which is a bit of a pain. It's always a pain when you try and straighten a, a trace out with a pad on it that's got a crease. Um, but I, I do it, I'll show you how I do it. Also as well, I can't put too much heat in here because if you look directly under this connector is the headphone socket. And this board is really compact. They really are trying to save a lot of space here. And you can see that VCC pin. Now the, the connector goes, pin 1 is ground, pin 2 is ID, then you've got uh, 3 and 4 which are the data pins plus and minus, and then you've got pin 5 which is VCC, and what you're, you're seeing now is me working on that VCC pin. Now this connector only carries ground and power. And the, the, the two data pins aren't connected to anything. You can see one of them is, is just a pad and the other one was just a pad. So thankfully, we don't have to do any rewiring. You know, we can just get this up and running again by just replacing the socket and because the, the power and the ground um, are okay. Now, if you look at pin one and two, they're actually together. The pin one is ground, pin two is ID pin and it tells you in the data sheet if you're not using the ID pin grounded and you can see that that's what they've done there so pin 1 and 2 are grounded now all I'm doing now is just cleaning off the flux now if you watch carefully I'm not going in a circular motion I'm going up and down um, in, in fact I'm just going down the reason for that is I don't want to lift that uh, VCC pad because I've already straightened it, I've got rid of the crease and there you go, you can see I'm just going over the top of it, going downwards I don't want to lift it and you can see if you look carefully you can see this, some of the solder mass coming off as well um, on the actual Q-tip just doing it very gingerly here Now, I had a bit of problem, guys, when I was replacing this uh, micro B USB connector. The problem was, was I didn't have any fully surface mount versions like this one. Um, this one here is partially surface mount. You can see the, the actual connection pins are surface mount, but if you look at the side, um, the anchor points are through hole. Uh, so what I had to do Whereas I have a spare board like this, I, I took this uh, off this board and I bent out those anchor points uh, and cut them to size so they were pretty much uh, turned it into a surface mount version. So yeah, I had a little bit of a problem, but I got around it. Now here's the connector I got. Now you need to remember uh, this connector is not a proper surface mount version of the micro B connector this is a through hole version that I've <laughs> MacGyvered um, pretty easy to do all I do is just took the through hole uh, mounts uh, straighten them out basically wing them out um, and you can probably see that and I just cut them down to size and uh, yeah thankfully I got it to, to fit on there 
Now this has been a bit of a pain <laughs> to align because it, it's so fiddly, you get it right and then you just touch it back so then it goes out of alignment, you've got to do it all over again. So yeah, I spend about two minutes just trying to get this aligned. But I get there in the end. Um, but you can see where I bent those um, through hole uh, anchoring points, uh, basically wing them out. So take out a through hole version and basically converted it into a fully surface mount version. Watch this. Crap. There you go, I'm out of alignment. It's so fiddly. There you go, I'm gone. <laughs> Pain in the backside. You want to you want to try and do an HDMI port. It's even worse. <laughs> what I will say about this connector is this one feels a lot more quality than the one I took off. The one I took off felt cheap. This one feels, you can you get a feel when you're working with stuff like this. And this one feels a little bit more quality. So I won't, I won't be surprised if this one costs like a couple of pence more uh, than the one that came off this. Um, but you know, these things are built to a price. Okay, what I'm going to do now is put my finger on top, hold it down and just anchor that one point in there. And this is where you need asbestos fingers. <laughs> and there you go, that's it, that's anchored in. I just want, want to get one point I can anchor in and that's it. It's not going to move about all over the place now. I'm going to just adjust it. There we go, I would say that's pretty, pretty good. So I'm just gonna come in now with some chip quick flux. And I'm just going to anchor that one in and I'll do the other one as well, just to neaten it up. Pushing down with a little bit of force just to, to hold it down and there you go, that's it, that's in. And I'm just going to do the same for that one I tacked in. And that will neaten that side up. And there we go. It's that side done. Touch, neaten it up, and that's it. Done. Now this opposite side um, is a little bit more tricky because I've got a SD card holder in the way, so it takes me a little bit more time uh, to get it. If it wasn't there, I'd have, I'd have done it straight away. It would have been pretty easy, but obviously I'm fighting against that uh, micro SD card holder. The chip quick flux really good stuff that chip quick flux 
I'll put a link in the description below to it. It's really, really good stuff. You can see how nice and shiny the joints are uh, once it's done. Like I said, I'm having a bit of trouble trying to get it to take to that pad. Can you see the pad underneath? It's just been a pain um, because, you know, I'm fighting against that micro SD card holder and it's, you know, it's just in the way. <laughs> but I get it in the end. That chip you can see uh, just below the actual connector U2 is the main charging chip. Uh, this is the main charging port. This port only carries power. There's no data or anything like that. So it's, it's a fairly simple one to repair. I mean, if the pins um, on the data, uh, pins had, had blown out um, and took the pads with them, that would have been a simple repair, a bit of cane or wire and just follow where the, the pins would have gone to. Um, so yeah, it, it wouldn't have been a, 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 a tricky repair if, if, if the old port would have come off, uh, pins, the old pins would have come off. Because uh, the traces are going to tell you where the actual pads went to. So, you know, as long as you've got the anchor points, which I have here, I was pretty confident of replacing this this port, this uh, connector. Sorry, and here you go. I'm trying to <laughs> desperately trying to get it to take to that pad, and it's been a pain in the ass. <laughs> And this is where I get it now, you'll see me get it. There you go, got it. <laughs> now I've got, I have got solder on the side of the connector, doesn't matter guys, that's perfectly fine. Um, as long as it's not like a massive great big blob that's going to stop it going into the, the housing. It doesn't matter if you get solder on the side of the connector. You can see there, solder on the side of the connector when, it, when you lift it up there. Now what you'll see though, is because I don't use any more solder when that pad actually connects to the actual housing you'll see that solder gets sucked onto that pad and it will neaten itself up just try it because I, I can't get it because of that SD cards in the way if it wasn't there I'd get it it's just been a real pain And there we go, we got it. And you see how the, the solder's come off the side of the can now? It's gone down to the pad. So yeah, that's it. There, that, that's the two anchor points on each side taken care of. What I'm doing now is just pushing those pins down and making sure they're pretty flat uh, to the actual pads I want to solder to. Um, the reason for that is because because I've used a, a, a through hole version, I might have, it might have be a little bit higher than I want it to be because obviously I've winged out those uh, anchor points that were originally through hole. So I'm just pushing those down just to make sure that they're close to the pad so when I solder to them you know the pad and the pin get soldered so the the pins not floating basically now obviously there's nothing I can do about the third pin that that pads totally gone 
but it's not used anyway so um, there's not a problem there and the same with the with the actual fourth pin as well both the data pins aren't used but it, like I said if they were a bit of cane or wire run cane or wire from them uh, to the points where they were originally kept connected to not difficult to do if you've got if you don't have cane or wire you can actually use uh, coil wire yeah, is a really good substitute as well now like I said these two pins are connected together so it doesn't matter if I bridge these two pins this is ground and the ID pin and like I said in the data sheet uh, it tells you if you're not using the ID pin ground it and obviously that's what they're doing with this so that's both those pins taken care of obviously the third pin I don't need to do coming into the fourth pin now I should really be using a, a different size tip a smaller tip but I can't be bothered at this point to change it yeah there we go we got a nice bit of solder on there now I'm going to clean that up in a, in a little while I'll get a bit more flux on there and clean it up. I just want to get it anchored in at the moment. Now this pin, the, the VCC pin, obviously this is the main power pin. Uh, what I want to do is because this thing got creased, uh, and that's going to be the weak point, you know, it got pushed out, it got pushed in, and it lifted the pad up and creased it. What I want to do is I want to get a lot of solder on there. Um, the reason for that is if I can get a mound of solder over that crease, it's going to stiffen it up. there we go that's perfect look you can see now that solder's gone over that crease and that will stiffen that weak point in fact I actually come in and make it a little bit better now and there you go it's perfect got a nice bit of solder over that crease that's going to stiffen that trace now all I'm doing now is just making sure the pins are soldered in um, you'll actually see me check pin 3 which is just floating I don't know why it's just a bit <laughs> but you'll see me do it watch I'm checking pin 4 that's VCC I'm checking pin four again there you go there's some checking pin three it's not even connected to anything I don't know why and I'm doing the two that are bridged together and yet yeah, they're they're both fine there we go checking it again don't know why it's just, just habit guys you just do you do a lot of these and you get into an habit of checking all the pins even though one's floating <laughs> And that's pretty much it, that's, that, that's it fixed. All I'm going to do now is just come along and clean it up. And it's done. Uh, also, one thing to note guys, when I told you about Chip Quick, how good it is. Look how bright those joints are compared to the ones, say, that were originally on there in the first place if you look at C1 
um, compared to the chip quick ones I've just done um, they're so much brighter um, and also what helps as well is I'm using leaded solder and obviously this has probably been made with unleaded solder but yeah that's it done quick clean up uh, and she's all repaired Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Now you can probably gather from the title of the video <laughs> that I've already fixed this thing. Um, but yeah, what I'll do now is I'll play the message I sent to my nephew through WhatsApp and it's just explaining that I've fixed it for him. And it's all fixed, Matty. I'll show you here's your charging cable plug it in and you'll see the red light charging light come on and there you go it's charging baby so that's fixed now what you've done is your old one this is your old connector that was just here you'd broken it off and you might not be able to see it in this video, but there's four pins there. They're supposed to be five. What you've done is you broke one of the pins off as well. So what I had to do is take this off. Now, luckily for you, I had an old board that's got one of these connections on. So I took it off this, um, popped it on your soundbar board, and yeah, it's all fixed now. But try not to break it again, you plunker. <laughs> There you go guys a little bit of a different video today hope you liked it if you did please give it a big thumbs up like comment subscribe all the usual stuff and as always i'll catch you on the next one winner winner <laughs> catch you next time guys <laughs>